Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much to all of you to give us this great opportunity to share about what we are doing here in Okinawa. My name is Eugenia de Arce. I'm one of the founders of Da Vinci International School. We started this project 13 years ago when my son Daniel uh, started uh, having a hard time at school. He started showing uh, symptoms of depression and we thought that it was a good time to talk with the teachers and the principals to find a solution. Uh, the point is that we couldn't uh, have any solution at that time and we decided to change Daniel to a different school. In this new school, he did much better, but because he was uh, very behind, uh, he needed to do a lot of homework and it took him three, four hours every day after school. And on weekends, we were working like six hours every day. Uh, he was exhausted and by the end of third quarter, he couldn't keep going anymore. Uh, at that point, we decided to uh, start a homeschool with him and the first day he was very sad. Uh, we dropped uh, his siblings off at school and came back home. He didn't want to do anything and he told me, mom, I really want to learn but school sucks. And I started trying to explain to him that there were many kids going through the same thing as him and also in the past, many people went through the same thing. Uh, I share with him the story of Einstein, uh, Gandhi, uh, Da Vinci, and I explain to him that they stood up and kept going and he should do the same thing. Uh, at that time, he started feeling better and I also explain to him that probably this situation that he went through, uh, it could be a good opportunity for him to start something new. The idea of starting a new school just blossomed him and he started thinking in this idea and also give the school a name, that the name was Da Vinci, and after that he said, Mom, the school should have good teachers. Uh, the school should have good breaks and good study time and time. enough with lunch and no homework, mom. And without thinking, he was putting and setting the pillars for Da Vinci International School. The thing is that by the end of the fourth quarter, Daniel was finishing his fourth grade with excellent grades. Also, he was happy again and he was proud of all his achievements. That was a big sign for his siblings and by the next school year, uh, two of the other siblings wanted to join him in Da Vinci International School and then also some of my uh, friends' kids joined us uh, in our first year, school year and by the second semester, Many new families were with us too. Da Vinci International School is different. What makes us different is our holistic approach. I will ask uh, Dr. Adrian Arcel to share with you about that. The work we do at Da Vinci International School is holistic, uh, which means that we cover uh, a lot of different aspects all at the same time. We are talking about this uh, aspects individually just for the sake of uh, analyzing them but in the day by day this happens in real time all the time. Teachers need to have a mind adjustment. Uh, our system is student-centered not teacher-centered. It is not about how well I am prepared to give my lesson but it's more how well am I prepared to manage the students so they can learn their lesson. Is less of me as a teacher and more of them as students. It sounds exhausting for the teacher, but the reality is that we, we all, teachers and students, will dive in together, making this into a regular, normal daily activity. 
One way to explain how we introduce these changes is through the concept of uh, cultural immersion. The school experience becomes uh, a subculture. Uh, it is like going into a different country. And going to a different country for a kid looks a lot like going on vacation. They face a school with the expectations of having fun. So the school experience, the learning experience becomes something they can have fun with. Learning a new language and learning in a new language becomes something they can have fun with. It, it, it becomes a challenge that they can have fun with. This culturally different setting opens uh, the door to accept a different set of rules. The first thing we do in the classroom is revising with the student what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Um, for example, learning, making mistakes when learning a language is something acceptable. We all make mistakes. Uh, but making fun of someone that made a mistake, that is not acceptable and the teacher will point that out immediately and help the student correct the behavior. Bullying, for example, is something that is not acceptable under no circumstances. Now, because the students enjoy the school experience, they make an effort uh, to accept the rules and make it work. So they, uh, they accept beforehand that they will go into this journey along with the teacher. The different disciplinary methods, they become part of the classroom culture. The teacher explains very clearly and many times what are the consequences of breaking uh, the rules. It ex he explains how the time, time out works and the students accept the terms. So when the student breaks a rule, then the teacher uh, sets the consequence of breaking that rule. Uh, it's not a surprise for the student. He might not like it but he learns that the consequence or the timeout is the, is the result of his own choices. So by going through this, the student learns that next time they need to make better choices. Uh, for example, not to break the rule so they don't get into the timeout. After the initial setting uh, for the first group, what follows is uh, social learning. New students joining the class, they find out that all the students there, they already know how the system works. So they learn by imitating the behavior of the students that they have been there before. In this way, the students, they own the culture of the classroom and they become the best allies for the teacher into setting the standard for good behavior for the new students. They become advocates uh, and exposing potential bullying, for example. And, and this is how the classroom, uh, they move on with this new set of rules that is part of the new culture that the students have already accepted. All changes uh, from the seating arrangement through the, the games they play at break time and are led by the teacher who is uh, aware of everything that is happening from social uh, behavior to individual uh, challenges uh, all the time. We firmly believe that the training of teachers is the key uh, to create a new school experience. Thank you very much for this opportunity and here we are, where are your service? One of our keys is the exercise time in the morning. I will ask Ezekiel to share about that. Here in Da Vinci, we have the physical fitness program. And within this program, we have nine main focuses. The first one is group stretching, followed by cardio. After that, we have gross motor skills, movement training, high speed games, catching, throwing, precision, and strength measurement. Uh, all of these exercises, we do them and we execute them in the form of play. Now, when the student is having fun exercising, uh, the brain releases chemicals inside the body which maximizes the potential and ability to learn. Whereas if the student is not having fun stretching, it releases minimum to no chemicals at all and instead builds up stress. I would like to 
invite Daniel now uh, to share with you about the schedule of the day. After exercise, we go through the rules with the students. Uh, this helps them understand what they can and cannot do during the day and helps the day go a lot by easier. Uh, we have five rules. Number one, respect people and things. Number two, follow teacher's instruction. Number three, no violence. Number four, no tantrums or complaining. And number five, English only. Now, inside these rules that are very broad, we have very small rules here and there. For example, respect people and things includes things such as don't break other people's stuff, don't push people, don't hit anyone, and so on and so forth. Now we use a timeout discipline strategy here uh, where they break a rule, they have a designated timeout that they need to go through. Uh, now we try to separate the rules from the teachers as much as possible. Uh, this helps the student understand that it's not about challenging the authority of the teacher when they break a rule, but about respecting social norms. And with this in place, the student is more open to receive help from the teacher uh, to improve his behavior. Uh, the next thing that we do is we have study time. Now, during study time, we teach them how to learn on their own. And this is a skill that they need when they get to high school and college, so the sooner they learn it, the better. We start with a placement test where they take. Uh, it's for us to find out exactly what it is that they don't know. Uh, things like reading, math, language, spelling, comprehension, understanding. We test all these areas and then we build a catch-up program based on the holes that they have in their learning reteaching them the things that they have forgotten instead of reteaching them things that they already know and wasting time. Once they complete this catch-up program, we introduce them to a personalized curriculum for them, uh, which focuses on their specific learning strategies, their specific uh, time goals, their speed, and their uh, efficiency. We focus on hard work. Uh, we ask them to redo the mistakes that they did. Uh, we don't give them answers. We use a coaching approach to teaching where we ask questions and help them get to their answer on their own, where they can be more proud of themselves. During lunchtime, uh, students and teachers, they eat together. We use it to get to know them, and, and they, this is a perfect time for them to get to know us teachers better too. Uh, we teach them to enjoy lunchtime in a healthy way. Uh, things like good table manners, uh, finishing all their food, uh, not throwing food in the trash, cleaning after themselves. This all helps the students uh, avoid a potential eating disorder in the future. During break time, students and teachers, they play together. The teacher has to be very fit because there's a lot of running involved in the playing time. Uh, this helps with bonding with the student and it helps uh, students uh, and teachers set the right mood for the rest of the day. Uh, we use break time as a time to teach them uh, how to solve problems on their own when they came up. We have a six-step problem resolution strategy. It involves analyzing the problem, identifying, apologizing, restoring the relationship, the consequences, and move on. We teach them to forgive each other and forgive themselves, and then we close the problem. As for homework, we don't have homework here because the amount of work they get done during the day at school is more than enough to complete the requirements for the year. Uh, compared to a traditional public school with a lecture style learning, the amount of time that they have for learning varies between students depending on their learning disability. Someone with ADHD might not get as much as uh, someone else. So here in Da Vinci, we have a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, teaching method where we sit with them and we go through the problems together. So the amount of work they get done here is a lot more compared to that of a public school. So there's no need for homework and this leaves them time for after school activities such as sports, family time, and so on. Now, the Vinci system helps students with learning disabilities interact normally in a classroom setting, but to ensure success, we include psychological support uh, as well as uh, per perception orientation therapy for students with dyslexia and other, other disorders such as ADHD, ADD, and autism. There is also 
behind scenes and I will ask Debbie to share with you about that. At Da Vinci, we have two ways to work with students that have learning disabilities and or behavioral problems. The first way is in-class psychological support, where we spend each day working with the student in whatever difficult area, including social problems, learning problems, reading problems, writing problems. The other way is an, on a an one-on-one -on -one session where we do individual therapies, such as perception orientation therapy and self-control therapy. This helps the student to further develop their skills and improve their behaviors in the class. Uh, during these procedures, we use five basic stages. Stage one is building the history of each student. Stage two is the core of the problem, which is the orientation of their perception. The students with learning disabilities you often use the tool of distortion of their perception to better understand the world. However, this tool is what causes them to have problems with uh, reading and writing. So we teach them a way to control that tool that they use, as well as uh, gain control of their body and balance. Uh, stage three is to teach the student how to better control their motor skills, their energy levels, uh, their aggression and violence. Stage four is teaching the student writing, reading, techniques that will help them to relearn everything that they've already learned without the distortion of their perception, making it easier for them to absorb all the material. In this stage, we reteach the alphabet as well as some trigger words that uh, stop the child from being able to understand while they're reading. And stage five is the mastery of the basic concepts. During this time, we help the student understand things such as change, self, me, body, consequence, effect, before, after, sequence, order. These concepts aren't usually taught at regular systems, so it helps a student to improve their daily behavior in life after we spend some time uh, incorporating these new concepts. And that is pretty much the therapy that we do with them. Uh, if you have any questions, please let us know here at Da Vinci. This we finish our presentation for today and thank you very much for giving us this amazing opportunity. Count on us in anything you need.